Well, you see, the previous issue we just talked about, uh, the increase in tuition fee and the subsequent reduction and the protest by the students is the reason, amongst many others, that the youths in Africa especially, and Nigeria to be precise, need to know their rights that have been provided for them by the constitution of the country. And joining me to discuss knowing your right as a youth, I have two of my guests, uh, one in the studio and one joining us uh, virtually. Now I have Festus Oguns, a legal practitioner, with me in the studio. Thank you so much, Festus, for joining me. Thank you for having me. And I also have Rosemary Ochiwo, a lawyer and programs associate at Hope Behind Bars Africa. Thank you so much, Rosemary, for joining me. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you. All right, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Now, we have seen the issues that the youth are faced with, especially in Algeria. Why do you think it's important for the youth to know their rights? Uh, uh, first, let me start with you. Thank you very much. Well, on my part, I believe knowledge is power. It is the knowledge on the part of the citizens that propels them to ask questions, to demand accountability, to demand transparency and to demand basic right to dignity of a human person, which I believe is the you know, foundation of that right, apart from the right to life anyway, the right to dignity of a human person is the foundation of that right that every citizen must know and be very conscious of. So when you are treated badly, when you are treated unfairly, when you are dehumanized, not necessarily by way of physical torture, indirectly by the failure of leadership in the country, then you know that your right to dignity of a human person is uh, violated. But I do not believe that the fundamental challenge with our system is the inadequate knowledge of the rights of our people. I think the fundamental trouble is that those in the position of authority do not seem to respect or regard the rights of our people. And that's where the problem lies. When you go to the pages of our laws, you see all of these provisions there. You go to chapter 2, chapter 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The rights of our people are there enshrined. Look at the African charters on human and people's rights. These rights are there. Right. Uh, but, I'm, but, I'm glad but, that... I'm glad that you mentioned that, Festus, because uh, now that, that will bring me to my second question. And I want to quickly direct that as, at Rosemary. Now, it's so sad that we've seen youth over the years intimidated, gaslighted, and manipulated uh, to the point that they end up doing things that, is, that they're not supposed to do or they don't do things that they're supposed to do because they don't exactly know their rights. Who do we blame uh, for the rights of the youth or the rights of the people generally being infringed upon, Rosemary? Rosemary, are you there? Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, oh, yes, yes, I can I hear you. Can hear you. All right. Okay, perfect. Yes. So I was saying thank you so much for having my organization on this show. And I was also saying that um, thank you for what you do, um, spotlighting the challenges that we have in Africa. Now, um, I would answer that question holistically from this approach that in the society, we all have a role to play. So there's no one specific sector that can be blamed. Um, we have the culture of silence in Nigeria. We have the culture of um, blaming victims. We also have a shrinking civic space. And um, reality has shown that the role of civil society organizations play a great role in fighting for human rights um, abuse, human rights violations, and in protecting the rights of individuals. So there's no one sector that is to blame. Um, however, we all have a role in ensuring that the rights of individuals are protected, that the rights enshrined in Chapter 4 of the Constitution of Nigeria, which um, Festus adequately alluded to, is protected, and that where these rights are infringed upon, that they are um, these individuals have the right to seek redress and justice is served. All right. Uh, okay. Now, uh, first, as I would quickly like to ask, is there any uh, where in the Constitution where a person's uh, right can be infringed upon? For example, the right to life. If someone commits a, an offense and is sentenced to death, uh, the person has forfeited, for lack of better word to use, his or her right to life. What other instances can a person's right be act actually be infringed upon? Well, there are there are derogations 
to the right, some of the rights anyway, that are provided for in the Constitution. And this derogation can only come into place when we have a law validly made by the legislature derogating from this right. That does not necessarily mean that the right can be arbitrarily violated, no. But we are saying that the derogations as provided for in the Constitution right. can, can be made. Now, one important thing is that looking at Section uh, 45 of the Constitution that provides for this derogation, it says that the law that is made by this uh, legislature has to be reasonable, justifiable in a democratic society. But the challenge we've had over the years is that these laws that are made by the legislature are usually in contravention of that very right and not necessarily derogating from it. So uh, I think uh, the challenges are quite um, complex and uh, the jokes seem to be on all of us. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, now, finally, Rosemary, and very quickly, there's only so much that the youth can do even after they know their rights. Uh, what would we say that the government can do to ensure that these, um, you know, maybe security operatives or executives do not infringe upon the rights of people? What provisions can be made? Rosemary, can you hear us? Very quickly, please. Oh, hi, uh, Blessing. Sorry about that. I had a bit of um, network glitch. Could you please take that again? Okay, so I was saying very quickly in a few seconds, right? There's only so much that people can do even after they know their rights. If the executives or the law enforcement agencies still infringe upon this right, what can the government do? Well, um, going back to what I said about the role that um, civil society organizations play. So this is, they are the bridge between um, the people and the government. And so oftentimes we need um, an, an independent institution to hold the government accountable. So there, and there's also the place of checks and balances, you know, where um, the legislative checks, the executive, and there's also a check on the judiciary as well. So um, going back to the question I answered earlier, we need all sectors of um, the country to be independent in order to ensure that we have, um, we protect, we are able to protect the rights of individuals. So where there are violations and the government does not seem to um, want to put adequate measures in place to ensure justice, the civil society organizations can take it up. Right. And um, as we have seen in times past, such as when the uh, frivolous petitions bill was almost passed, which was um, tagged the anti-social media um, law, um, due to the intervention of civil society organizations, that um, law was retracted from the Senate. So okay. these are the, the ways that um, you know we can All right. um, prevent. Uh, thank you so much for that, Rosemary. I want to uh, quickly apologize that we cannot extensively discuss this now, and we're hoping that we can revisit this topic because it's a very, very important issue in Nigeria and, of course, Africa at large. Uh, Festus Oguns, thank you so much. Rosemary Ochiwa, thank you so much thank for joining for us on the program. Hoping to see you again soon.